Welcome back to Hoops Lounge, the show with just a bit more job security than an NBA head coach. I'm Justin Rowan, a.k.a. Cavzana. Uh, with me today, Mon uh, Mark Griffin, a.k.a. Montreal Mark, and a special guest, Pierre, from RBTL Sports. Pierre, how are you doing today? Very good, guys. How are you guys? Thanks for having me. I uh, appreciate it. Hey, it's great. It's great to have you here. Um, so we're going to start things off talking about um, the coaching changes. Uh, the coaching carousel every summer seems to be crazy, but this year, uh, crazier than most, it seems. Um, guys that I consider top 10 coaches, top 15 coaches in the NBA are being let go. Frank Vogel with the Indiana Pacers, who I thought... Uh, overachieved this season was let go by Larry Bird, citing that they needed a different voice in the locker room. Mark, what are some of your thoughts on Vogel being let go in Indiana? Uh, you know, I've slowly used Larry the last few years, but this has been the nail in the coffin for me. Uh, like you said, he's a young coach. He's got uh, one of the best reputations in the league, defense-oriented. He, he, he got Lance Stevenson to play well. I mean, give me a break. <laughs> this guy is amazing. He's amazing. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> I'm 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 befuddled. I'm completely befuddled, and uh, uh, great coach going forward. I I, I don't know, uh, Pierre. Do you think this was the right decision uh, for Larry Bird? Do you I, uh, at least see some kind of logic behind it? I honestly don't really see the logic behind it. I think Larry Bird just did it just to do it. I think it's probably something internal at that point. Because there wasn't any rhyme or reasons to get rid of Vogel in the first place. I mean, look at the team they had this year. The team, it's not a its not a particularly great team. They only have one blue chip player, and that's Paul George, and that's thats about it. And you, they, they still took these guys to the playoffs. He's always in the playoffs. And the year before, Paul George was injured. So, I mean, what, what, what more is he supposed to do? And the Eastern Conference was particularly good this year, so I don't know what are Larry Bird's expectations, but he assembled the team. I mean, let's not forget he's the one that got that that traded for for Kawhi Leonard away. So I mean, that's on his resume. So at some point, I, I, I never want to disrespect the legend, but he needs to look into himself at some point because some of the moves that he made with for that team were made by him. I mean, right. Vogel can only coach the guys that that, that are big. That are being given, you know, it's, I, I, I didn't understand a reason for that. That's, but I think it's internal. I think it's something much more than just X's and O's at that point. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, it's tough because what my sense of the situation is that there were differences in how they wanted to play. Like Larry Bird wanted to go towards the small ball style. Frank Vogel was trying to use the rotations he felt gave them the best chance to win games. And mm -hmm. I feel them getting the seventh seed was really over overachieving. Mm -hmm. uh, they had a great defense, and they were playing Monte Ellis. They were playing Miles Turner, a rookie, a lot. Um, sure. th their front court depth was terrible. Like I think a lot of people expected them to have a slow start, and they came out of the gate prepared. Uh, they, they were off to tear at the beginning of the season, near the top of the Eastern Conference. Um, it's, it's just funny, because... Larry Bird, um, great player, great coach. Uh, he's done a good job overall as a GM, but now he's the guy that's fired Rick Carlisle. He's fired Frank Vogel. He, he seems to have an eye for finding coaching talent, but this move, his kind of philosophy that a coach's voice can only be heard for three years, I, I don't... I don't know if I completely buy into that. I, I think Vogel is a great coach. Sometimes you just need to change things up and freshen it up, maybe with the, the roster and the personnel there. You know what? And if I'm a coach going forward, I don't know if I want to play under coach under Larry, knowing that you you basically got to go. Yeah, that's the other thing. I hate to say that, but yeah. It's, it's, a, <laughs> well, it's a weird thing going on there. Yeah. <laughs> weird is definitely the right word. Uh, the, the other weird one was Dave Yeager getting fired today. We're recording this on Saturday. Uh, Memphis Grizzlies let him go uh, after just a terrible, terrible season on in, on in regards to the injuries that they suffered. Marcus Saul going down, Zach Randolph missed some time, uh, Mike Conley. Basically, the whole roster was just in shambles, and and that team fought. Uh, they scrapped and they stayed in the playoffs. Uh, Adrian Wojnarowski uh, from the Vertical uh, did cite that Dave Yeager for the third straight year was kind of asking to interview with other teams. So you can kind of understand it in, in some regards. But uh, Pierre, uh, what are your thoughts on uh, Yeager getting let go in Memphis? 
But I think you, you, you touched it. You touched it right there. If he's interviewing for the teams or asking for permissions for the team, that means he has already one foot outside. Yeah, he's already he already has one foot outside the door. And and, and to a, to a, to a management to management to the team is to, to the execs. For them, it, it might look like something something that they don't really feel like he has a lot of loyalty. I'm not saying he's not a loyal person, but if you're already every year you're asking to be interviewed by the team, you're always looking at the uh, on the greener pastures, especially after a really tough year like this year when he he galvanized his team and I mean they went through the gamut of, of, of injuries and you would think that he would have he he would have built. Yeah, he would have built uh, that credibility to stay within that team. But if, after all of that, you're still trying to get other jobs, I mean, what does it say about you? And what does it say about the way your team, ref the way it reflects on you? And I don't know, I don't really blame him because some of these other jobs might look a little bit uh, a little bit att more attractive right now, especially if he was looking for that Minnesota job before it got, off it, before it got offered to Pivotal. But, yeah, that's another one that it, it's there's deeper layers, uh, I think, internally than just him um, not making it past the first round this year. It, it was what you what you touched on right there. It, it makes a lot of sense to me why he was let go. I think at some point, right, was it three years? Mm -hmm. I think they, mm -hmm. what they had right there, and, and and they made that change consciously because they knew that they couldn't they, if they wanted to advance. They needed somebody within their team that they could trust going forward. I think right. that that level of trust it had probably been broken a long time ago, but we didn't know. Mm -hmm. All right, Mark, I'm going to hit you a bit with the rapid fire here. Hmm. Um, where where do you think the best spots for Vogel and Jaeger to end up would be? Yeah, I mean, just a quick uh, side note. I think Jaeger should have been a Coach of the Year nomination. I don't know who could have done that with yeah, me too. Once yeah. D-leaguers. Um, I love if if Orlando would give one of these guys a shot. To be Ooh, honest, I like that. the uh, core. Um, where else? I mean, uh, Chicago. Why not? Why not? Hoiberg doesn't Chicago, seem to be the right God. fit. Hoi Hoiberg already doesn't he have like four years yeah. left on the contract? I, I, I don't like it. I don't like the fit. I just don't like the fit. And you know, there seems to be a lot of animosity. Mark, Mark you're so cold-hearted. You're you're advocating yeah, for two guy, two teams that already still have coaches. They haven't even fired them, and you're trying care. to you're trying to send these guys the picks. I, I love both these coaches. I just I just I don't I don't want them unemployed. I don't want them unemployed. So. Anyways, these are two of the best young coaches in the league, and just to be snapped like that, I don't like it. And I'm sure Rick Carlisle is going to, you know, he's head of the coaches' union. I'm sure he's going to have a, a fit about this, mm -hmm. and he deserves to because it's happened to him, as you mentioned before. I just don't like this this state of the league, this trend of just letting guys go so young. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Pierre, uh, your two destinations for them? I'd say Orlando. I'd say Orlando and the Knicks. I don't. I don't Knicks? particularly. I'd say Orlando and the Knicks. I don't particularly look at the Knicks as that much of a bad job, unless Phil. I mean, it's it, it's all it's all it's all dependent on Phil. At the end of the day, mm -hmm. that's what would that's 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 the icebreaker right there. Because if Phil has the open mindedness to allow a coach to coach the way that he wants to coach, these guys are these guys are established guys. They're established coaches. They've won in this league. They probably never won championships, but they won playoff games, they won regular season games, just let them coach the team. And I look at Orlando as well as a particularly good destination. You have a good core, they have a good, a good group of young guys there on the team. I, 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 no income tax. <laughs> I, don't, yeah. I look at Orlando as a possible destination. I don't, I don't understand why Orlando is not much more attractive than that. Mm -hmm. It's a really good job, and they have, mm -hmm. they have a, a, the, the group of guys there that you can grow with, that you can coach up. Uh, that already play defense, that probably just need a little bit better shooting and a little bit uh, more chemistry on offense. Yeah. I definitely would look at Orlando and the Knicks mm -hmm. if I was them. Definitely. Yeah, personally, I'd like to see Jaeger uh, maybe in Houston. Uh, Vogel, I think, would be great with the Knicks as well. Um, there's a lot of really good options out there. 